Good morning, everyone. Uh, we thank you for joining to discuss our company's fourth quarter and the financial year 2024 performance. I believe you have had the opportunity to go through our quarterly results and investor presentation. If you haven't gone through them yet, you can access them on our website or through the stock exchanges. The fiscal year FY24 stand out, stands out as a momentous chapter in our 33-year-long journey, where we've reshaped countless opportunities, redefined our trajectory, and met success in all financial and operational metrics. We witnessed growth in assets under management, AUM, recorded the highest yearly disbursement, observed robust customer addition, maintained our pristine asset quality, improved our net interest margin, reduced the OPEX ratio, and fortified our capital base, paving the way for a successful year for all our stakeholders. It's comforting to mention that we have surpassed the guided range of our standalone annual performance targets on most of the parameters such as our AUM grew by 34% against the 25% plus guided range, NIM of 13.2% as against 12.1 to 12.5% guidance. ROA stood at 4.8% as against the 3.5 to 4% guided range. Cost to income ratio stands at 42.6% as against 45 to 50% guidance. Capital adequacy ratio stood at 27.7%, surpassing the guided range of 22 to 25%. Debt to equity ratio at 2.7x as against 3.5x to 4x guided range. The rest three are also well within guidance range, which are our OPEX to average AUM ratio of 5.60% as against the 5.60 to 5.75% guidance. Credit cost of 1.44% as against guided range of 1.25 to 1.50%. And ROE that stood at 18.5% as against the 17.5 to 19% guidance. Our Punjab portfolio performance was a little dampened due to the ongoing local challenges. However, by taking timely actions, we have been able to contain the issues. Our total on-book portfolio in Punjab stands as rupees 369 crore as of March 24. Overall, par 1 in Punjab stands at rupees 35 crore and par 90 at 19 crore. Out of this, par 1 in the 10 affected branches stands at 23 crore and par 90 is at rupees 11 crore. Our collection efficiency in the state is 97% for FY24 and 92% for Q4 FY24. Currently, we have slowed down our disbursement in the affected areas and have deployed additional collection officers to engage with and motivate with the clients, and we are meeting success in that. Coming to our operational performance, we close the financial year by recording 30% year-on-year growth in AUM. It stood at rupees 11,850 crore on a consolidated basis. On a standalone basis, the GLP stood at 10,593 crore, up by 34%. Securing the 10,000 crore milestone in SCNL was a historic moment for us this year, underscoring our client's trust and our team's resilience and fueling our momentum forward. We continue to witness robust growth in our borrower base. We added 6.3 lakh customers on a consolidated basis and 7.8 lakhs on a standalone basis, highlighting our expanding footprint, operating efficiencies, and growing demand for our services. We recorded our highest yearly disbursement both on a consolidated and standalone basis. Consolidated disbursement stood at 10,549 crore. It grew by 30% year on year and standalone at 9,691 crore, up by 31%. We forayed into two new states, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, in line with our strategy to expand our inclusive charter to more individuals from low-income groups. With this expansion, our presence is spread across 26 states and union territories. The branch infrastructure now stands at 1,393, with the opening up of 107 new branches spread across 421 districts. The robust underpinnings of our organization, which includes our solid fundamentals, ethical work practices, customer-centric business approach, and employee-focused operational framework, have ensured our continued social relevance. As a result, we have emerged as a preferred financial ally for numerous low-income households throughout rural India. This is also evident from the healthy number of first-cycle customers at 55%. 
during the reporting year, we maintained the trend of our healthy collection and asset quality. So on book GNP of the company stood at 198 crore, which is 2.5% of the on book portfolio. The company has sufficient on book provision amounting to 164 crore as on March 24, which is 2.1% of its on book portfolio, exceeding the RBI mandated provision requirement of 148 crore. Furthermore, the overall provision coverage ratio stood at 83% as of March 24, marking a significant increase from 64% recorded in March 23. The performance of the new portfolio originated from July 21 onward continues to perform better than the industry, which constitutes about 97% of the on-book MFI portfolio, with par 1 at 2.5% against industry par 1 at 5.9%, and par 90 at 1.5% against industry par 90 at 3.6%. This demonstrates the effectiveness of our underwriting processes. The collection efficiency remained consistent quarter on quarter for the reporting period and stood at 98.5% for the year on a standalone basis. The collection against right of pool stood at 46 crore. We commend our dedicated field staff for their relentless efforts in ensuring successful loan recovery through persistent follow-ups and client engagement. This year, the industry witnessed a remarkable surge in credit demand from the rural market, a trend vividly illustrated in the figures of the industry's loan portfolio. The rising internet penetration, improved income levels, and evolving aspiration and lifestyle in rural areas are fostering an environment conducive to sustained growth in credit demand. Furthermore, the economic forecast is optimistic, the predictions of an above normal monsoon in the coming time, which will in turn boost agriculture productivity and disposable incomes. All these factors bring in good news for MFIs like us, who are predominantly rural in catering to those at the bottom of the pyramid as we further enhance footprints into this expanding market. Coming to our financials now, the company's consolidated net interest income grew by 43% to reach 1,340 crore, largely driven by robust loan growth portfolio in the reporting financial year. The pre-provisioning operating profit for FY24 stood at Rs. 732 crore, registering a growth of 80% on a consolidated basis. The net interest income and pre-provisioning operating profit on standalone basis are at 1,218 crore and 699 crore respectively. Our profitability milestone touched the new mark as we recorded a part of 436 crore as against 5 crore in the previous fiscal year on a consolidated basis. On standalone basis, we recorded a part of 423 crore, up 60% year on year from 264 crore, uh, 264 crore in the previous fiscal year. Our OPEX to average AUM ratio witnessed significant improvement, dropping to 5.8% on a consolidated basis compared to the previous 6.3%. Similarly, on a standalone basis, the ratio decreased to 5.6% from the previous 6.3%. These decreases in the percentage demonstrates our steadfast dedication to optimizing operational efficiency and resource allocation through our, our operations. Likewise, our cost to income ratio improved to 45.4% as against the 56.5% on consolidated basis, and on standalone basis stood at 42.6% as against 54.3% in the previous fiscal. On the borrowing front, this year we have locked 39% increase on year on year basis and raised 9,494 crore from various lenders on standalone basis. Additionally, the company added 20 new lenders. We draw good comfort from our diversified liability profile with continued access to funds from domestic and international lenders, improved credit rating, also well capitalized balance sheet to maintain sufficient liquidity, and strong control on our borrowing cost. Delving into our robust capitalization endeavor, we successfully complete we have successfully completed 15 rounds of capital raising since 2008, culminating in a remarkable sum of 1537 crore, out of which 595 crore was raised post-COVID-19, the last round being QIP of 250 crore done in December 23. As on March 24, the company has ample liquidity of 1,100 crore and has a healthy CRAR of 27.7%. Sharing our perspective on the ongoing KYC issues in the industry, I would like to say that in light of increasing digitization, landscape is evolving rapidly. However, along with the myriad benefits or laws, also emerge significant challenges that demand vigilant attention, particularly in the realms of security. One such challenge is the rising occurrence of authenticity of KYC. At Saturn, we take pride in upholding the highest standards in our internal processes in authentic customer onboarding. 
Rigorously adhering to stringent guidelines and protocols has been integral to safeguarding our customers' operation and maintaining transparency. With strong underwriting capability and bringing in cutting edge and new age technologies to onboard our customers, such as iris based verification, geo tagging, e signatures, etc. We have tried hard to rule out instances of fraud, non compliance, and other potential issues. Through strategic investment on in our robust IT infrastructure, we are not just safeguarding our business operations, we are paving the way for enduring growth and triumph in ever evolving digital realm. Over the past two years, our relentless pursuit of digitization has yielded tangible results. For instance, we have witnessed a remarkable reduction in our branch manual registers from 20 to just six, which has led to a more streamlined process, processes and enhanced efficiency. With a very strong uptime of 99.6%, which translates into a very strong tech advantage, this combination of technological advancement and operational excellence propels us forward, ready to thrive in today's dynamic business landscape. Like I said in the beginning, this year has proven to be a success for us and has, <clears throat> sorry, has demonstrated our resolution to excellence. We earned multiple laurels for our processes, compliance, innovation, and consistent per strong performance. To name a few, our company was awarded with the latest standard of ISO 27001-2022 for information security. We have received the highest ratings and double A ESG rating and gold level certification on client protection principle. We were recognized as great place to work for the fifth consecutive year and top 50 great places to work two years in a row amongst others. Going ahead with an extensive reach spanning Pan India, a distinctive operating model, a diversified product portfolio on secured and unsecured lending, a robust technology infrastructure, seasoned board and management personnel, a diversified liability profile, a resilient business model, and a strong balance sheet. We are poised to be at the forefront. Our aim is clear to be the ultimate one stop financial services provider, primarily in the rural in India, differentiated by our process and technology, and to emerge as a preferred financial ally for millions of underserved local income, low income households. Now, let me run you through the financial operational highlights of our company. Starting with consolidated highlights, we have a customer base of 34.7 lakhs as on 31st March 2024. It presents across 1393 branches and 421 districts of India. Our top four states contribute to 56% of total AUM in FY24, and the states are UP, Bihar, West Bengal, and Madhya Pradesh. The total revenue for the year stood at 2,241 crore, up by 44% year over year. Standalone highlights. The average monthly disbursement rate, run rate, is, uh, is about 808 crore. Our average ticket size of MFI lending for FI24 stood at 47,000. We have a well diversified customer base of approximately now 34.4 lakh clients with 76% rural exposure. 54% of our clients belong to first cycle as on March 24. We have added 158 branches during the year. Back for FI24 is at 423 crore, ROA at 4.8% and ROA at 18.5%. Net worth stood at 2,667 crore as on 31st March 2024. Total borrowing stood at 7,269 crore as on 31st March 2024. Debt to equity ratio stood at 2.7x. As on 31st March 2024, 96.4% of our districts have less than 1% of portfolio exposure. In our constant endeavor to enrich our customer lives, we provide financing of various products, which includes loans for bicycles, solar products, home appliances, consumer durables, and water and sanitation facilities. An update on subsidies. Through the collective efforts of our subsidies, we aim to extend the spectrum of financial services to our clients. By harnessing the strength of our microfinance outreach, we endeavor to extend affordable housing and retail MSME loans specifically to clients who have completed more than two loan cycles with the company and have higher credit requirements. This approach aligns us with a broader strategy of customer life cycle management. By servicing microfinance graduated clients, we are not only deepening our relationship with existing clients, but also capitalize on their evolving financial needs and capabilities. Saturn Housing Finance Limited has now reached an aim of 756 crore, which grew by 50% year on year, having presence across four states with 7,456 customers. SHFN has a 100% retail book. The quality of portfolio remains intact with GNP of 0.8% as on March 24. The company has 26 active lenders, including NHPD Finance, CRAR of 49.2% and gearing of 2.2x. Bad for FY24 stood at 9 crore. Credit rating of A- stable from ECRA. That is Finserve Limited, the company's MSME lending arm, has reached an AOM of 501 crore. 
we are running down the business correspondent book and focusing on building msme retail book going forward crar of 48% and gaining of 1.4x bad for fy24 stood at 5 crore credit rating of a minus table from micra in summary as we progress on the path of expansion we are poised to embrace greater profitability while upholding cost efficiency with this i would like to open the floor for questions thank you thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touch tone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Usha Toshan from Toshan Investments. Please go ahead. Hello. So may Hello. I request you to use your handset, please. Uh, on behalf of Usha Sharma, I am uh, Prabhuji Al Sharma, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Kano. Sir, congratulations for presenting superb performance on all fronts. Sir. I have some questions uh, for sir. Sorry to interrupt you, uh, sir. May I request you to use your handset, please? Your audio is muffled, sir. Hello. Hello. Yes, 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 sir. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, congratulations for presenting superb performance on all fronts. I have some questions. For sir, our cost of funds always higher by around hundred basis point feet compared of industry leader. While our uh, credit rating is in the eight par, uh, wise sir. Second, as you guided 25 percent CAGR growth till 2028, are you sure we will able to achieve 29,000 crore AUM by 2028 and 25 percent secure look out of 29,000 crore AUM, sir? Finally, sir, congratulations! You got India's most trusted leader award during the year. But I have, I think, uh, so market still not trusting or our past come across when we see the real value or market cap of the company. Thanks and best of luck, both. Financially, as contributors. So let me let me piece it one by one. You know, basically. So on the cost of funds, on the rating, I think you know we've got an upgrade. You know, uh, technically, I think uh, COVID had whatever reasons it had in terms of you know whatever the rating agencies could probably look at. But I think with the robust performance coming in now for the last, I think about 10, 11 quarters on a trot, I think you know my sense is that you know this will keep on improving. You know, we've had uh, success a little bit on our cost of borrowing, definitely yes. You know, but if you really ask us, and it's a constant feature, it's a work in progress which happens practically every time you, when we go in, and uh, we've been able to have a slight reduction in our. in our cost of funds you know definitely yes you know which is close to about 30 30 odd basis points you know and definitely i think you know this is going to be uh, a feature which is probably going to be uh, with us uh, in the in the future on our uh, achieving a guidance on 25% plus you know uh, we are very very uh, positive and we are very sure that we'll be able to achieve a 25% guidance of all the factors mentioned above uh in my own speech you know where i said you know if you look at the macro condition they are very conducive if you look at the range of the branches which you have in territories where there is lesser penetration i think you know that is an advantage which we hold very well uh for us uh, for going into two new states and i think you know we've done wonderfully well by uh, keeping our operating efficiency is better as well as reducing our exposure not beyond 1% in majority of what 97% of our districts which ever is there so i i think you know a culmination of all that you know uh, put together will probably give us that advantage that 25% plus uh, for us is not even a slightest of challenge you know moving forward ahead on the third in terms of the market cap you know i think probably i'm not the best person to give you an answer on that i think you know uh, it's for people to really decide but i my only you know take on this is that you know we have actually performed very well uh, if we look at the complete data which we've given in terms of our uh, resilience in terms of our profitability in terms of our growth in terms of our 
asset quality in terms of you know i would add you know our technological advantage which we have you know so when you know uh, for us onboarding of a customer as from a start of a onboarding of a customer to probably getting money from right of books you know i think you know we've done it all you know <laughs> it is all a function of the market to really look at it but i may add on to this you know beside micro friends i think you know we've got two babies which are coming up which are becoming very very strong now which is our subsidies of satin sensor and satin housing i think you know it is only a question of time and people will actually be able to realize the ultimate benefits of these two subsidies when they come up the fold uh, on a bigger scale you know and i think you know for us this is the advantage which we carry as an institution uh, with microfinance and two of our secure lending uh, subsidies of sinserv and uh, shfl i hope i've answered all your questions thank you sir thank you thank you a reminder to all participants ladies and gentlemen you may press star and 1 to ask a question the next question is from the line of samir bise from jm financial please go ahead yeah hi um, thanks for the opportunity and congrats on a good quarter uh, can you share the write off amount for uh, for 4q what are four the write off amount write off 44 crore was the write off amount in q4 fy24 okay and any uh, details on what portfolio was it was it uh, the pre april 21 book or or any specific state so actually when we write off we actually take because see our slippage is so less we actually do account by account feedback from the team where they have exhausted all their efforts and they they give up so majorly it is 360 plus and above but sometimes we even take a call it when it is earlier when the field uh, team gives us that feedback and and just to add you know wherever we don't write we make adequate provisions or provision coverage ratio is 83% so wherever sort of say we have taken a call but it has already been provided for okay uh, thanks uh, secondly if you could uh, disclose the stage 1 and stage 2 provisions uh may not be be this time around but as an ongoing practice it will be great uh, if you could share the numbers uh, that will be helpful i think we can share the numbers with you basically offline you know but uh, sure. a point uh, taken you know i think we'll be able to uh, we'll show that also now uh, oh, yeah, yeah. thank you and all the best thank you thank you the next question is from the line of nikhil agarwal from vp capital please go ahead Uh, Mr. Nikhil Agarwal, may we request you to unmute your line from your side, please? Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Okay. Hi. Thank you for taking my question. So, uh, congratulations on uh, good numbers on all fronts. Uh, except this one clarification that I need on rea- uh, on provision. Uh, so, uh, with regard to this Punjab book, now this quarter we were expecting that it would come back because the affected areas and the affected amount of portfolio was really very low, which was around fourteen, fifteen crores. and out of that we have already seen as uh, stated in the presentation and as it's been earlier we have already seen 11 to 12 crores of impact so going forward are there any other issues that we're going to see uh, is this going to be repetitive and uh, uh, and again on the right of portfolio if you could uh, just uh, give some clear view on where these right of uh, books have come from so so on the punjab portfolio i think you know uh, if i can give you a flavor uh, the par one has remained uh, steady at about 20 odd crores 23 crores you know since the last 3 mm-hmm. to 4 months you know so if you look at the deterioration in these 10 branches i think that has not happened so no fresh new par is coming in it's only that the flow which is happening in this uh, uh, in the 90 plus you know that is probably which has been there and that which is also if you really look at the overall scenario i think in terms of Uh, the complete balance sheet side this is uh, practically insignificant so that's on that you know write off is there no specific write off technically write off is a function of you know what the field technically says that you know they will not be able to collect as well as you know a function of maybe somewhere a dpd 
uh, overall it is practically you know it's everywhere you know we pick up you know wherever it is not coming so it's not very state specific as such uh, if that is what you uh, really want to know and there is nothing in terms of you know looking and we do it case by case basis uh, with with consultation with the operation team you know all right and uh, so with regard to par 90 plus uh, flows because of which uh, we have seen uh, stress in the punjab book those par 90 plus flows have also elapsed or there's more there because i understand that par 1 plus we are not seeing any inflow or any fresh threat but in the par 90 plus flows which are back ended uh, is there any more uh, impact left there's nothing you know if you really look at it is the par 90 is closer to about i think no 13 or 11 11, 11 crore no no my 11 crore if you look at par 1 which is 23 inclusive of that 11 crore what you might have maybe in addition you know going forward would be another maybe you know 5 7 8 10 crores you know which will probably come in which as i said if you look at the complete construct of the overall credit cost and the this thing you know what credit cost is 1.44 percent i think you know which is probably uh, pretty pretty healthy you know uh, looking at uh, whatever is going on in the entire uh, uh country in terms of you know how uh, our microcap is shaping up i think you know my sense is that uh this board uh that there has been an effective uh stoppages uh, stoppage of you know probably in the uh, uh, the flows into the and uh, even in the punjab circle as such you know got it got it well, give me the clarity the seven eight flows that you saying that now might come seven uh, number it is 5 to 10 Uh, is it again gradual or is it a one time thing that comes so does it hit the book uh, suddenly or like one quarter thing or is it uh, staggered over two three quarters i think it could be uh, staggered uh, staggered over two quarters as such you know basically but i think you know uh, it, it's a, it's a very low number you know as compared to what people's apprehension was on punjab portfolio so i think you know uh, even if it's uh, staggered across maybe it'll be about 5 7 crores per, per quarter as such you know i got it got it thank you so much also uh, can i ask one more question please 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 go ahead okay uh, one thing we have the highest yeah. operating expense ratio in the space that we operate in all right in the msi space so i just wanted to know no, sorry nikhil you need to check your facts we don't have the highest in fact you know we're closer to uh, probably the lowest yeah, so we are uh, what everyone says barring the largest player in the industry practically if you see another competitor declared their results their opex is 6.6 and average is actually at the average and at the lower spectrum of the average barring the industry leaders okay i'm looking at the uh, i'm looking only at the standard and msi book uh, and i'm comparing with the top three players this what yeah. i'm uh, referring to the stand alone book okay let's talk the last quarter numbers in last quarter we were actually at the lower end of the spectrum when we look at the opex of i said except the industry leader rest everyone is from 5.8 to 6.2% and we were at again 5.8 5.9% if you talk about last quarter is where we are all right and uh, are we doing anything uh, uh, anything specific to bring this down is there uh, uh, is there where, is there a timeline when operating leverage is expected to kick in and this is working process this is working process you know we our endeavor is always is to bring it the opex down uh, to bring in more optimization and with the denominator base increasing i think you know we be we will be able to achieve something or the other you know in the opex you know uh, coming down you know. so we have actually given a slide on the uh, operating efficiency and if you see we have actually achieved more than 25% operating efficiency on the existing setup whether it is the branches loan Uh, account per loan officer or the clients per center etc this is how our one is this and second of course is the base effect which takes it into uh, i'll say you know there is significant improvement during last financial year and we are on the lower end of the guidance that we have given so so and then we are sort of committed to work harder and then sort of keep it improve it further But but uh, you see the improvement from that stage. Yes, yes, that is uh, perfectly visible. Congratulations and thank you. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Siddharth Obray from Prudent Equity. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. So this is a fantastic set of financial numbers that you've announced. Uh, My query is on the 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 AVM growth. So you see, you've been growing for the last few quarters at 30 percent plus. The disbursement are also 30 percent. So is this some pent up demand that uh, that has come up, or is it? Do you think this is sustainable going forward? 
Uh, Siddharth, I think, you know, Bob, as per our guidance, you know, for us, you know, uh, we've given 25% plus, you know, and uh, our forays into underpenetrated states and as well as, you know, taking on new states along with the existing uh, borrower base, you know, and the deepening of geographical presence in underpenetrated states. You know, I think for us, a 25% plus uh, growth is absolutely a no-brainer, no? uh, to, to be very honest, you know. In fact, for us, the achievement always has been uh, to, to try and beat that, you know, and definitely I think we've beaten this, you know, this, this year we'll probably be able to do that. Uh, this year, yeah. And just to right. add to why the 25% growth is a no-brainer, even if you see this year, the growth in clients is more than 22%. And so actually it's a very sustainable organic business volume growth. It is not merely on account of the ticket size, which is not growing as much as the overall growth. Just another comment. So is it, is it any particular region or is this all the, uh, the 26 it's states? Across, uh, oh, uh, uh, I'm glad you asked this question because uh, when we got the market study uh, done, when we did our QIP, we actually saw that we are actually present in under penetrated or lesser penetrated geographies across the industry vis-a-vis -vis our peers and competition for instance states like up states like assam states like the central part of india etc are barely two digit in terms of the penetration but if you look at the overall addressable population there is a huge pent-up demand and we are also seeing even the industry is taking note of it and they are also wanting to go to these under penetrated states away from the original hub of microfinance, which was Southern India. Okay. All right. Uh, so, so, so basically that was my question that if this uh, loan growth is sustainable, then, uh, you know, so uh, ballpark, uh, do we expect something like a 14,000 CR AUM, you know, probably for FI 24, 25? Uh, so that anybody not, gets, you know, uh, yeah. but uh, we will try and touch uh, to be closer to that, you know, for sure. All right. Sure. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shreyans Jain from Electrum PMS. Please go ahead. Good morning. Congratulations on our great set of numbers. I just Thank have you. one question. One of our competitors mentioned that there is a Karza Mukti Abhiyan happening in Rajasthan and NP as well. So like, are we seeing some stress there or like, what's the situation on the ground there? Uh, to be very honest, we haven't seen any stress uh, because of uh, uh, Karza Mukti Abhiyan uh, in Rajasthan as well as NP. For us, it's business as well. Okay, so like no impact, zero impact, right? No, no, not at all. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Agarwal from Water Equity. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. So my question uh, is ties to somebody just said that, you know, Saturn seems to be present in more of underpenetrated or unprinted districts. I just wanted to understand this 57% loan one customers. I'm assuming it's for uh, Saturn loan one and not industry. Not new to credit. So my one question is, uh, what is the breakup for 57 percent in terms of new to credit and uh, you know uh, new to starting from older MSI? And my second uh, point is, do you do risk based pricing for these customers who are into higher cycles who are matured? So is what is there any mechanism for risk based pricing? Thank you so much. So hi, this is Aditi Singh. Uh, so in first cycle, while there are 55% first cycle customers for Saturn for every incremental disbursement, 18 to 20% are actually new to credit. So that was your first question. And, and we are actually going to, we have just introduced, we have now introduced risk-based pricing for the subsequent cycles. So this has been done effective April. Yeah, first April, yeah. What is the approximate benefit you are giving to customers if you can disclose that? Sorry to interrupt, sir. Uh, we are unable to hear you. May I request you to use your handset, please? Yeah, sorry. So I'm asking, uh, what is the incremental benefit you are giving to the uh, subsequent cycle customers? So that is fine to disclose. Technically, overall, it becomes about 40 basis point, you know, lesser than you know, uh, from where we started. You know. Okay, that's helpful to me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ronak Singhvi, who is an investor. Please go ahead. 
congratulations uh, for a fantastic set of numbers uh, i i just wanted to understand uh, so yesterday rbi basically uh, came across with a note uh, on the unfair practices in charging of interest i just wanted to check if uh, this factor is uh is not following any of those practices just from a comfort perspective no. so so there is absolutely no impact of their circular on saturn uh, we we electronically disburse all the loan and uh, the interest is charged from the time it is sort of credited to customers account okay thank you the uh, uh, another question was basically on the uh, on the provisions of the end across npa is uh, what is the legacy assam book Uh, which is still uh, sort of lying in in the growth NPA uh, and any and any status update on recovery from the government. So, so the uh, old book is close to about sixty crore, which has adequately been provided for uh, the the discussion uh, with the government is on through the industry association. Uh, it's slightly challenging to commit a timeline, but but there's no indication that will not happen. It's only a question of time. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. These are the my only questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahil Shah from Crown Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Hi, sir. Good morning, sir. What What Thank is our guidance in terms of uh, ROA and NIMS for this year? Uh, we have very well surpassed our previous guidance. So now, how do you see it shaping up for the rest of the year now? So names, uh, I think we are uh, guiding at about uh, the the band which we have given earlier is about 12.25 percent to 12.75 percent, and the ROA, the guidance is at about 4.25 percent to 4.75 percent uh, for FY25. So I mean, for FY24, I believe you have done much higher than that, correct? um yeah but we always uh, are very conservative <laughs> okay so you're sticking to the previous uh, guidance and then uh, yeah, yeah so we're sticking to the previous guidance okay yeah yeah okay. we're sticking to that and when it comes to the growth you're expecting you're saying it's a no brainer so do you see it happening uh, more from the uh, in terms of client addition or from the geographies in which you are present or it's a mixture of both so what's the mixture of both yeah So it's a, always a mixture of both. Always a mixture. Ah. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Thank you, and all the best. Thank. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chirag Fialo from Ratnat Raya Capital. Please go ahead. Hi. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, congratulations on a uh, good set of numbers. Uh, just two clarifications quickly. What was the gross slippage for Q4 and for the year? Okay, ma'am. Sorry, give me one second, ma'am. No, ma'am. Thank you. Just give us a minute. Thank you for uh, saying uh, the slippage is close to about 60 odd crore, and for the entire year, uh, including something has already been written out of that, was about 140 crore. There's a gross slippage. Understood. Uh, understood. Uh, so seventy and one forty for the year. Sixty and one forty for the year. Sorry. Sixty and one forty. So it's slippage is to ninety plus. Got it. And uh, could you just talk about sort of uh, you know how do you think from here say cost will evolve for the next twelve uh, to eighteen months? Broadly, what what are you seeing on the ground, and what do you think we'll end up at at the end of say twenty five, twenty six? See, our guidance is still, uh, you know, which we had given for the credit cost was at about 1.5 to 1.75 percent. You know, we did about 1.5. I think, you know, uh, maybe early days is yet, but we feel that it's going to be stable within this guided range of ours. You know, of 1.5 to 1.75 percent. You know, uh, that's what our thought process and looking at the ground. Uh, I think, you know, we're just waiting for the elections to finish off. And uh, once that finishes off and the mm-hmm. results come out, I think we may uh, look at uh, relook at it basically. But as of now, currently we uh, look that this is going to be within the guided range in itself. You know. Andre, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. 
the next question is from the line of Vignesh Ayer from Sequent Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, congratulations, sir, on good set of numbers and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my question again uh, is related to uh, ROA uh, at a more on a consolidated level basis. Uh, so looking at a more uh, you know a three or four years down the line, what is the steady state ROA that uh, uh, we can achieve? Uh, for us, uh, we did an analyst meet, and I think you know, for us, a steady state, including console and everything, you know, for us, uh, would be again in the range of about 4.8, you know, uh, percent or so. You know, that's a steady state, you know, which we are trying to look at. So it'll be within that range of about, uh, let's say, 4.8 to let's say 4.9 or 5. You know, yeah. I think it's going to be within that uh, realm. You know, so the, the, this includes. I mean, I, I, this is like the consolidated business, right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, what would the number be for ROE? ROE would be, uh, I think, 20% plus, you know, for sure. Uh, we've done 18.5% this year. My sense is, in, I think, you know, for us, looking at the capital adequacy, profitability, ROEs, and everything we put together, I think it will be always be 20% uh, 20, 20 plus, you know. Could be in the range of 21, 22%, and I think that is what our uh, effective consolidated guidance uh, is, you know. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, so as is the growth rate we are targeting 25% or even more than that. Uh, so, what would be the uh, mix of the uh, of book lending and the uh, to the total uh, EM? What uh, would a number if you could share with us? So, I think you know for us we are, we are dropping our off book you know slowly steadily year on year. I think you know a year before that you know it was closer to about uh, 29 percent. 29%. 29%. We are down to about 23 percent now. Uh, for us, uh, uh, for us going forward, uh, uh, we would be bringing it down to, uh, I think, closer to about 20% or lower than that, you know, in the next couple of years. I think it's going to be below 20% for sure. Okay. Okay. So that's all the message and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Suryansh from BizX Enterprise LLP. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir. Congratulations. Uh, my question was that uh, uh, what is the uh, average cost of borrowing and uh, versus uh, like incremental cost of funds? Uh, this was my question. Just one minute. Yeah. So, so marginal cost of borrowing is closer to 11.5% or so. We've got the rating upgrade only towards the beginning of last quarter. So we started getting some overall success there. The blended cost will come down over a period of time. Okay, okay. And uh, uh, will we go for capital raise uh, in near time or we, we have done whatever we, are, uh, we have to raise? See, looking at 25% plus growth uh, and the capital adequacy right now, I think you know we don't have any kind of a uh, thought process of going for any capital raise, you know, uh, in the image of you. Okay, sir. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Agastya Dave from CAO Capital. Please go ahead. Oh, am I audible? Yeah. yeah. You are. Uh, uh, good morning, Singh sir. Uh, congratulations on great set of numbers. Uh, so I have a few questions. So first is a follow-up on what Aditi ji uh, was saying in terms of penetration levels. So Aditi ji, how are you defining this penetration level? You said that UP is just double digit. So uh, Agastya, this is actually uh, done on the basis of the total addressable households who are below a certain income level and how much households have availed any formal credit, including microfinance. So pan India, how how much would you uh, like? What kind of number would you ascribe to this penetration based on this? Why we do not have pan India? What we have seen from that crystal report is Tamil Nadu and uh, has been uh, has the highest around 60 65 percent, followed by states like Bihar and Karnataka at around 55 odd percent. So this is what the uh, high penetration is. Around 60 65 percent is the highest across the industry. And when you said UP is double digit, you meant like 11 to 18, 18, 18. 17 to 18 percent is the number for UP. So let's say the comparison UP is about 17 percent uh, penetration as compared to these uh, higher states of about uh, 60 65 percent. So that's the difference. You know? right. And so individually, if you look at like, like across geographies, how what is the 
uh, if you compare it households of Tamil Nadu with UP, I'm pretty sure the propensity to borrow would be different and the amount to which they can uh, they are comfortable borrowing that will also be different. So if you just do a household by household comparison, uh, what would be the relative size of UP with respect to let's say Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh? So size in terms of number of people or income level? No, I, I'm saying uh, 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 the extent, of, let's say income level or uh, the borrowing levels. Okay. Like for that example, in Tamil Nadu, awesome. probably you can give 1 lakh rupees. In, uh, in UP, can you give 1 lakh rupees? That is the question. Actually, yeah. it will be opposite. In UP, we can give more <laughs> because uh, they are... After the HHI norms, etc., what we can actually lend to a household, we are restricted in southern India. The rejections are high by 60, uh, at almost 65, 70%, while the rejections in UP are 20 odd percent. So, uske current say, and the thing is, repaying capacity across India, people have in microfinance. So, I would say 90, 95% in people. Uh, of microfinance borrowers do have the repayment capacity. Uh, and just to give you a flavor, Western UP is probably the highest in terms of income generating levels, you know, as compared to probably, you know, uh, most of the states. Cool, cool, cool. cool. Uh, so, uh, another thing was that I remember many years back, you started your cashless uh, initiatives for disbursements as well as collection. So, what levels have you reached uh, today? And in terms of the process of driving this cashless disbursements and collection, uh, uh, how do you do it? Is it like, do you have a nodal bank where all the accounts are linked to that bank and the, uh, the transactions happen through one nodal bank? Or are you uh, more diversified and you go to a particular customer and uh, or a, a particular borrower and if they have, say, in SBI, then you transfer the money to SBI. If they have in Canada Bank, you will do it to Canada Bank. How exactly is it structured? So, so we are bank agnostic, you know, in terms of our cashless uh, collection. For us, we've got, you know, the methodologies of our website, QR code, as well as app and everywhere, and UPI uh, coming in, you know, across over there. So that, that which pays, uh, if you look at it, pure cashless, uh, without us touching money, is about 10%. Now, when we talk about cashless collection, I think, you know, for us, what is more important for us is the customer to be there in the meeting. And you know, normally we've seen that if a customer actually goes through a cashless mode of making a payment for her, attending a meeting is kind of, uh, you, know, it, 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 you know, they tend to avoid the meeting. We don't want that, you know. That's the reason yeah. why for us the model, the model is based upon a customer connect and the wrap over the customer. And that's the reason why for us, this has remained at about 10% and we would like the customer to come to the meeting, have a physical presence and the interaction with the loan officer probably gives us more insight in terms of the portfolio quality and the credit asset quality as such. You know. uh, but right. to add up for us, all the uh, cash is handled by our uh, by our agencies, you know, which already do cashless collection is technically cash collection through their uh, through their associates, you know, uh, which are being done there. So normally for us, our boys only bring the cash to the branch, and rest everything is handled by the uh, uh, these uh, uh, cash crop agencies, you know, which do it. Great. And so, may ask, disbursement also. Uh, sorry, you, you mentioned about disbursement also. For the last many years, we have been doing 100% uh, cash yeah. disbursement. So I ask this question because RBI recently has been imposing several restrictions on individual banks, citing whether IT related issues or compliance related issues. So if it may not be your fault at all, if you are heavily concentrated to one nodal bank and if they find something wrong in that bank's processes, your disbursements may get hit. So that is why I ask this question. Is there a risk to that? Uh, okay, I, I, I don't know whether you've uh, heard my uh, speech, you know, for us. I did. I did. The acquisition of onboarding, onboarding of a customer is absolutely very, very faultless with authentication of KYC oh, you, from an iris uh, so of which so I think is getting introduced in banks now. Uh, so over there, you know, we are missing. So we actually have no problem, you know, if we... Uh, could be a problem of our bank, you know, which we've got several banks, you know, which are lined up, you know, so we don't have a problem there, with a, there that. There is not a single bank, 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 you know, there are a lot of banks, you know, basically, with whom we, whom we tied up for disbursement. Yeah. So, so one, one final question, if I can squeeze in. Yeah. So may I ask one more question? Otherwise, I'll go back and look you. It's a tiny question. 
Tiny answer then. Please ask me. <laughs> sir, uh, sir, uh, sir, are you seeing any slowdown uh, because of the elections uh, in Q1? Because this is this time around, it is a very prolonged election where like there is a lot of disruption at the ground level. So, any any impact that we can expect in Q1 in terms of like low maybe a little bit in terms of disbursement, you know. But I think you know, added to disbursement, this this whole season is all about uh, harvesting. Its whole season is all about marriages. The whole season is all about uh, technically, you know, uh, you know, people not being available because of various factors of, you know, festivals being there. You know, so we had all these Vesakhi, Bihu, uh, Bengali New Year, everything. You know, so I think if you put all that culmination together, it'll be slightly the slower in terms of disbursement. But I think in my sense is that when uh, May comes in, and I think we'll be able to uh, bounce back in the in, in the normal uh, parlance as such in terms of disbursement. You know. Thank you very much, Aditi ji. Thank you very much, Singh sir. Uh, uh, all the best for the next one also. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pratamesh Savan from Access Securities. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Uh, congratulations on a great set of numbers to Satin and the team. So my question is with respect to, uh, sir, that we are seeing in the last two, three years that the overall NPA levels have been going down throughout the industry. So I just wanted to understand from your piece of experience whether it is because of the political stability that has been coming around in your key markets and given that we are seeing that the same political stability to continue for the next five years, do we see this kind of NPA numbers for the next five years or is it just we are at the good end of the broader cycle? So I just wanted to have what are your insights on this. Uh, I'll be very apolitical when I answer this, you know, uh, definitely, yes, the stable environment does add on to uh, uh, the NPA levels uh, going down, you know. Uh, but having said that, I think, you know, for us, uh, the more focused as an institution we are towards, you know, asset quality and credit costs, I think, you know, uh, the underwriting capabilities actually come back uh, to the fore, you know, uh, uh, which is more important, you know. So I think, you know, stability does add to it. But I think, you know, more than to it, you know, and that, that's what, you know, we as an institution are trying very hard to do it, to maintain our underwriting capabilities, augment our underwriting capabilities, look at uh, customer acquisition through all the lens, you know, and that's the reason why we said that uh, for us, iris verification and all that acquisition and everything uh, gives us maybe a slight edge in terms of how we are able to uh, do the acquisition and the underwriting of a customer, you know, moving forward. And, and that'd be a... Uh, that'll be a significant thing, you know, which we really want to uh, really concentrate upon and look forward to. And so, largely, uh, again, most of my questions have been answered. So, just one broader question on, you know, the structural needle. What are the two or one biggest risks that you see foreseen, you know, coming? <laughs> yeah, I doesn't tell you when it comes, you know, but, uh, but but as an endeavor for us, you know, uh, we are always, you know, uh, on our toes to really look at, you know, probably, you know, the ways and uh, means how to do it. And uh, just to give you that example, you know, for us, uh, Punjab came in, you know, uh, without even uh, other thing, you know, but since we have capability in our technology, in our data, in our underwriting, and we have a capability which we feel is sufficient enough, we were able to contain the damage in Punjab much better than you know, uh, you know, much better than what you know the industry has been talking about. You know, I think you know that's probably the answer which I can give you. Uh, uh, do you see any structural overhang where you know no, RBI comes in, you know, uh, uh, controlling on the rates that the MSI space has been doing? So, do you see do you see that as a risk? See, that's not a risk. That's a collaborative effort. You know, where the RBI would definitely love us as an institution to probably give a lower uh, credit, uh, you know, cost, uh, lower credit, uh, uh, you know, output to our borrowers and definitely, and we are, we are all moving towards that, you know, so the reason why we've done risk-based fighting and uh, looking at a 40 basis point uh, reduction which from 1st of April definitely is something, you know, where I think, you know, it's been a collaborative effort with RBI and, and, and uh, all the MFIs put together. So would that impact have an impact on you know target ROAs and ROEs going in? No, it it won't. You know, you see our guidance. You know, you got other ways to probably you know cut down on this thing. You know, you can cut down on your OPEX. You can look at credit costs. You can look at cost of funds. There are too many features you know which can probably be there. So any reduction in uh, ultimate cost will be coped up with you know you know five other factors which will probably be able to give you that kind of a answer. You know. 
try to answer all of the questions and still if you want any further follow on discussions you can reach out to me or my colleague ms shweta bansal from the investor relations team and we'll be more than happy to discuss and uh, share more perspectives on any topic you want to discuss in detail have a great day everyone thank you thank you on behalf of saturn credit care network limited that concludes this conference Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.